Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, last time I was here, uh, not last time, but last time I was here for long was about uh, 25 years ago. So when ISI was young and all of us, including me and Mario, were young. And, uh, uh, and it's still great to be here, and I'm very much thankful for uh, being uh, awarded this uh, fellowship and uh, uh, just being here is a fantastic experience. And uh, maybe I took uh, the task that Mario formulated uh, very uh, too literally and uh, he asked me to, uh, uh, to uh, develop and share some opinion about uh, what would be the uh, future of uh, uh, ISI and what uh, would be my uh, suggestion for that. And uh, of course the first, uh, uh, if I would have only one suggestion, would be to keep Mario as close to the uh, Institute for as long as possible. Uh, but uh, let me uh, speak a little bit more in this direction. So uh, in our days it's possible to still at the internet, almost uh, everything. And uh, to illustrate uh, the question that I would like to discuss, I took this uh, cartoon. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, there are this group of people, and most of them are uh, pretty serious guys. And they are uh, looking uh, on this dark and have uh, in mind pretty uh, important applications of this uh, object. And then there is this small boy which is uh, actually sitting on the neck uh, of uh, one of this guy and probably is not uh, uh, feeding himself. Uh, these people have to feed him and supply him with everything. And instead of uh, thinking about applications, he thinks about all this stupid stuff, all this uh, hydrodynamics and how this uh, uh, object flies and why. I mean, uh, wouldn't it be better if, uh, if he will uh, learn how to shoot and uh, do applications? Uh, so I think uh, this question, uh, unfortunately, uh, arises uh, at a pretty high political levels all the time. And uh, people uh, would like to uh, kind of make science uh, useful in a uh, very straightforward way and uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, bring uh, profit uh, immediately. And uh, what I want to tell is that uh, a place like uh, ISI is one of the places where uh, it's possible to uh, cultivate uh, science in, the, uh, in its uh, pure way. And uh, it looks like uh, it's impossible without it. That, of course, alone science cannot solve uh, the problems of the uh, society, but uh, it turns out, and this is experience of many generations, uh, that uh, many problems cannot be solved by science. And uh, if we would only think about uh, applications, uh, then we would probably uh, still be in business of discussing what is the best way to sharpen the uh, eggs made from rocks. And uh, yeah, now uh, for me, the most important word in the name of this institute is uh, interchange. And uh, this is uh, because uh, the uh, nature of uh, uh, science as it is in uh, today's world is that there are connections uh, which uh, is very uh, difficult to uh, predict and uh, uh, very uh, 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 sometimes it's completely uh, unexpected. And there are certain uh, uh, certain fields with, which uh, don't look uh, at all uh, connected, and people in each of these fields don't even know about existence of uh, the uh, problems in other fields. And when they uh, get together. Uh, they actually understand that they are discussing similar things and uh, they uh, have a lot to uh, learn from each other. 
And again, uh, for many years, uh, ISI was the place where this process uh, happened, and uh, I personally benefited a lot from that. So uh, what is my field? I'm doing uh, condensed matter uh, theory in general and mostly uh, quantum problems on uh, nanoscale. And uh, it's uh, uh, in, you know, public opinion, nano means small. Uh, this is uh, my daughter's dog. His name is Nana, and uh, he's really small. My daughter is not a scientist at all, but she called him Nana simply because of the size. And uh, it turns out uh, that, uh, in fact, uh, from the point of view of a uh, physicist, uh, the uh, nano is actually large. It's much bigger than micro, although uh, it is, uh, uh, you know, nano is uh, uh, 10 to the minus 9 and micro is 10 to the minus 6. But uh, in uh, uh, what we call nano objects, they are large. They have a uh, uh, lot of uh, uh, degrees of freedom. And uh, they are still not large enough uh, to uh, kind of uh, uh, discuss it in a uh, way uh, we use in uh, uh, conventional statistical mechanics. And uh, because of that, uh, nanoscience uh, uh, and nanophysics in particular is uh, complex and uh, the uh, problems of, uh, that arise are actually quite similar uh, to, uh, to uh, what appears, for instance, in uh, the uh, theory of networks or uh, in the uh, uh, quantum com computation or in uh, problems connected with algorithmic complexity. So uh, this is just one of the examples how uh, people from completely different fields getting uh, uh, in one place and being uh, uh, given an opportunity to talk to each other can uh, really help each other. Now, uh, uh, I still have, I hope, a couple of minutes, so let me try to make another point. So, uh, what is this? This is uh, actually a, a picture which uh, I made uh, in uh, Spain, in Granada, and uh, uh, it is uh, the only monument that I know, monument for uh, scientific uh, funding. So this uh, gentleman there is uh, Columbus and uh, the uh, lady sitting in the uh, chair is uh, Spanish queen uh, Isabella Catolico and uh, uh, what he brought, he brought his uh, proposal uh, for going to uh, look for the way to India uh, and maybe there is something that looks like a, a big bag of uh, uh, of gold, which he is supposed to get for that. And uh, what I also read uh, somewhere is that uh, beforehand he uh, applied for funds in Portugal, but Portuguese were more experienced in uh, uh, sea travels and they had better peer review. So they, uh, <laughs> uh, they found that it's kind of hopeless uh, proposal and it's impossible to, to get through. As you know, what happened that he did not find the way to India, but he finds something else. And uh, this is what uh, uh, happens uh, in science uh, all the time, that uh, people actually write proposals, but uh, they know uh, with high probability that it is not what they are actually going to do. If somebody uh, like theorist tells you what he will do in a year, he is either lying or he is not a theorist. Uh, and uh, what I want to tell is that uh, we now live in this culture of proposal writing when uh, all what we are uh, doing or 90% of time what we are doing and what we are teaching our students is how to write proposals. This is uh, something uh, quite interesting. Uh, this is uh, the uh, copy of a letter. Uh, it's actually application of Niels Bohr. Uh, he wrote it to get his three-year postdoctoral fellowship uh, in Cambridge. And it was granted. I mean, this is the uh, entire size of the proposal. Everybody of us who knows how to uh, get funds knows how much you have to write to get, you know, uh, 10 bucks. Uh, and uh, I think uh, this is what is, uh, again, important. This relatively small uh, institution like uh, ISI uh, has a chance to 
uh, get rid of most of this unneeded uh, stuff and allow scientists to do science, not uh, to uh, write proposals or to get H indexes and things like that. But the most, uh, think, uh, the most important for me uh, principle uh, that I want to uh, uh, put on the table is the following. I mean, uh, we obviously need money for research. There is no way that we can do research uh, without money. But we have to realize, uh, well, what are we doing actually? Are we uh, looking for uh, money to do research or are we doing research to get money? And again, uh, if we are uh, doing research to get money, it's not science, it's engineering. But uh, if you are uh, really interested in research and you need money for that, uh, I think ISI could be a great place for that. So I wish uh, this institution uh, great success and hope that I will not be detached from it for uh, quite a time. Thank you very much.